Welcome back, everyone, to episode six of my Castlevania Symphony of the Night playthrough. Uh, in the previous episode, we managed to clear out what was remaining on the map uh, at the very top, with the exception of the final boss fight and a little shaft on the far upper left part of the map that we can't actually get into just yet, but we will get to it eventually. Um, we will continue where we were the last episode, where we were just clearing out an underground mine shaft, abandoned mine shaft. Weird name for an area that is far too ornate to be an actual functional mine. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot. Let's go ahead and turn the familiar back on. We'll leave the ghost one on for now. I think we have another one coming up in the very near future that we'll pick up. There's a total of five in the game. Uh, I... Oh. Let's go ahead and take this guy on. He's actually pretty easy because you can dodge his attacks by ducking. Uh oh. Oh! I, I jumped at the wrong time. Oh, come on. That was easy. After the fight with all rocks, everyone else seems like a pushover. Yoink! I neglected to mention this uh, in the previous episode, and I was going to talk about it. Uh, so at the very... Oh, come on. At the very entrance of the game, on the far left, bottom left, where you come in and start the game uh, as Alucard, there's actually a room in the Sega Saturn version of the game that's directly under that main entrance room. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, the PlayStation 1 version of the game took that room out. Uh, and I believe it had a weapon in the in that area that is no longer in the game. They took the item out of the game as well. Why did they do that? I don't know. Might have been a storage limitation of the PlayStation 1 disc. I have a very serious doubt that that is the case, but I suppose it's possible. That little switch up there, we can't do anything about yet because we don't have the ability to hit it. But we will get it eventually. There we go. This is going to break. Ah! Oh, I like that I'm getting double hits. I don't know why. More importantly, I don't know why I'm fighting Salem witches. I thought they were all bogus. They weren't real witches. It was just a bunch of people lying about witches. Of course, I might be thinking of The Crucible, which was a fictitious story about the real events of Salem, but whatever. And there is our fifth and, I believe, final familiar in the game. In the Sega Saturn version, there was, I believe, two additional card familiars that you could get. There was one that was uh, another demon card, but it was one called the Nose Demon. And I think there was another version of the fairy card, and they essentially did the same thing uh, as the originals. So the new fairy card just basically did the same things as a fairy, and the Nose Demon just did the same things as a regular demon. Now, as I mentioned before, the demon card, or Demon Familiar, has the ability to do something that I think only he can do, and that is he actually can go up to that switch that was buried in the wall up above, and he can poke it. He can take his little uh, spear that he has and just jab the button. Now, the irony, of course, is because this is a game that came out in 1997? Whatever year it came out. Uh, the voice acting in this game is pretty bad. It's not the worst voice acting of all time. I think that distinction may still be owned by the original Resident Evil, but man, there were some really bad choices in the casting in this game, and this game or this character that we're about to hear is no exception. A switch. Why don't I press it and see? Sure, go ahead and press it. Thank you. Hey. 
Why did they think that was a good demon voice? <laughs> Getting some sweet fruit. All right, so that is a tough one. Just gonna fling some flowers at me. All right, I think I can stay here. Yep, we're good. Oh, I dodged the flowers. Oh, Ring of Aries. Nice. I had forgotten that was here. So that increases my attack damage. Confers the strength of 24 men. However, and you do see, uh, if you look at the bottom left of the stats, it also lowers my uh, defense to nothing. So I gain a ton of offensive power and basically become a liability. Uh, if you hit the wall twice here and get the turkey, you would be forgiven if you didn't think there was anything behind it. But of course, if you hit the wall a third time, it breaks to reveal a whole bunch of peanuts, a barley tea, and power of sire. Power of Sire is a consumable weapon. You use that and it does basically a, a, a screen clearing, I can't speak, uh, attack that does a ton of damage. It's a very good item if you're fighting in an area where you might get your ass handed to you. Like this room, for example. Ring of Ares may have put me in a serious bind here. Probably better off just leaving that fight. Oh! Where was I relative to the save room? I just got to go across the hallway here. Again, early on, most of the familiars, as they're uh, starting out, don't do a whole lot to help you. But as you start leveling up some, uh, or leveling the familiar up some, they actually do start helping a little bit. So if it just looks like he's following me and not actually doing a whole lot, well... He's still very low level. Once you get up to, say, levels 20, 25, that's when they actually start pitching in a little more. And again, you can always check the level of the characters by going to the bottom of the menu, Familiars, and there's your level count for everyone. Uh, Bat is actually the highest of the group, which is weird because he also did the least to help me. <laughs> All right, back out. I suppose he did hit a couple of enemies, but it was a very small number. I'd have to double check this, but I... Oh! I believe the uh, familiars all gain the same experience regardless of what you're hitting. Which means that if you're going into an area where there's lots of very small uh, enemies that uh, take very little to kill and respawn, you can level up very quickly. So if you're, say, in the entrance area of the game where all the little zombies pop up out of the ground and shuffle towards you and you put a controller, say, on a table where you can uh, hold down an attack button... You can let the game kind of grind some experience for them. Which I know because I think I've done before. <laughs> it's better than just waiting uh, hours and hours for one of the guys to level up to the point where you can use them. Karma Coin is another consumable weapon. Uh, it is another one of these ones that does, I think, a ton of damage if you uh, actually use it. It's kind of like Power of Sire and uh, Pentagram. I believe it's a screen clearing item with two effects. Yeah, see, these all do screen clearing. I think Neutron Bomb does as well. Uh, if we get into a spot where I'm using a really weak weapon against an enemy, I may end up going and using one of those just to show off what they do, but also give me a little boost. Combat Knife. This is a very good weapon. There we go. A little less damaging than the Holy Sword, but it attacks much faster. And if you stagger your hits, you can actually keep him from doing the full swing through. All 
He also, I believe if you do back forward, no, it's, it's a, yeah, it's the uh, quarter circle. Uh, quarter circle from down to forward, he actually does the full swing instead of the jab. All right, and yet again, this is a case where you need to be vigilant when you're playing through the game. You'll notice on the back wall, instead of being a blocked off brick wall, there's actually an opening. Which you can go through to get Bloodstone and Cat Eye Circlet. Let's go ahead and put on Cat Eye Circlet. Big damage, uh, big health restore by damaging cats. Which seems oddly specific. But there are, I believe, some enemies down here that are cat-based, so that is a good pickup at this point in the game. And also we picked up a Bloodstone right there, so now we lose the extra damage from the Ring of Ares, but we actually get our defense back, so that was probably a good choice. And it said it was improve, it improves your blood healing ability, so uh, and I think it actually boosts it to... I think it just doubles it. I think it's 16, but we'll find out if I can uh, find an enemy that I can bleed. Definitely not these guys. These are rare jaguars, or rare skeletons, rather. So it was a regular skeleton that became a rare skeleton under a full moon, or something. Killed the actual bone arc, and then the skeletons that carry it go running for their lives. Nice little touch. It's a source of their power. Uh oh, come on, get out of here. Stop it, stop, stop. This is where that fire mail comes in handy, because uh, unfortunately the flames, I don't think they go out. I think they stay up as long as uh, you're on screen. But thankfully, they're just annoying. They're not actually damaging me much. there. And we need to go both left and right, and I think left leads to a dead end, but I might be wrong. Alright, so no damage there, but my booty does the trick. See ya. Nowhere to run. I tell you, Dracula was uh, not terribly specific when he asked for people to help design his castle, or he designed it himself. A lot of crosses and stuff in there. You know, as a vampire, he probably would not want all of those things laying around his castle, but for some reason he left them up when he became a vampire or started life as a vampire. All right, so the echo item that we picked up earlier does this. Shows me all the spikes that we would be touching right now if I was uh, just trying to walk through. Thankfully, we have the ability to see the room, so we don't have to worry about that. And you hit this button, and the room becomes lit. Where are skeletons? Get out of here. Oh. Alright, so yeah, I think we might have left a, a, a small side room back there that I, I should have gone to first, but no big deal. That that left that I could have taken and didn't, I think, just leads to a handful of rooms back there. That's alright. We'll get to it eventually. And 
Yes. I got a pork bun. <laughs> I don't know what about the wear skeleton allows it to stretch its neck out like that, but whatever. There are some very strange enemies in the history of Castlevania. The longer the series goes on, the, the more exotic and bizarre enemies that you start seeing. Yoink, Spike Breaker. So I was right, this is the way we wanted to go. All right, so what Spike Breaker does is, that is a piece of armor right here. And as the name suggests, it is Spike Breaking, which allows us to go back through the room that we had to carefully negotiate as the bat and just walk right through it. And on top of that, it's just genuinely good armor, so that's a good pickup. Screw you. It's interesting. Sometimes he walks real slow and sometimes he gets real fast. I'm not sure what the, uh, the difference between his choices are there. All right, and here's what happens when you walk through the spikes wearing the spike breaker. Pop, 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 pop. It's very satisfying. Every time I play through this part of the game, it's just a compulsion. It's like uh, popping bubble wrap. You know you don't have to. It's not actually doing anything unless you're trying to throw it out. But man, it's so satisfying to just break them all. In fact, I think they come back when you leave the room, so this really doesn't help you. Not to mention, we've done everything we need to back that way, so there's no reason to do it. Well, they don't. They don't come back. Aw, that poor slime screamed to the enemy. Actually, I think that was a bone arc up at the uh, top of the room. So this is the room that we chose not to go into. Got a monster vial, a blood skeleton, a monster vial, a monster vial, a blood skeleton, a monster vial, a blood skeleton, a blood skeleton, and that's it. <laughs> and some health up and heart ups. So I just want a little water there. Gravekeeper got some skill. Alright. Come get it. That was dumb. <laughs> and then those guys actually turn into like a little flame monster. But I don't think you can you you do actual damage to them. I think they can hurt you, but they just fall eventually. Yeah. The nice little details they put into all of the enemies in this game uh, when they die. It's above and beyond. They could have literally just done the same standard, like, I don't know, depixelating effect on the enemy, like when they die, or just have them fall over and that's it. But. Just about every enemy in the game has some unique animation when they die, and it's just... It shows that they put a lot of little details into this game. I also like the uh, 3D effect for the lava on the ground below me. Very nice. Uh, let's go back this way. 
My booty doesn't really help here. I believe that enemy has a weapon called the Chakram, which is a little projectile-style weapon that you can use against them. Aha! Ice Brand! So now we are going to use a weapon that does ice damage. I believe it has a special effect as well. Yes, it does. That is a quarter circle attack, so down to forward plus attack, and he does like a little wind up and extra blasting and hit. Oh, I got hit before I could do it. Damn it, twice. Jump. Bam. Doesn't do very much damage, unfortunately. Not against this guy. I have to find someone who's fire based to really get the benefit. Gotcha. So this guy should be a little more damage. Oh, if I actually hit him. 47. Yeah. I don't think they actually hurt you if they uh, touch you once they go fire. Let's see. Nope, nothing. Ow. Jerk. you dummy. And yet again, you have to be very paying very close attention again to the room layout. This one again does not have a bricked off wall in the back. You can go through and lock armor, which we talked about in the previous episode. You put it on and the defense goes up depending on map coverage. So in the case of where I'm at right now, I've uncovered a huge majority of the map. Maybe not every single room, but a very, very large percentage, probably about 95, 96% of the map at this point. We'd still have to cover the tiny bit of uh, room area near the waterfall, the very entrance of the map, uh, that uh, shaft on the left side of the very uh, upper left part of the map, the final four rooms of the, uh, the castle, and then there's actually another small section of rooms in the very center of the map that we have not done yet. And we will very likely do that before the end of the episode. In fact, I, I can pretty much guarantee we'll do all of that before the end of the episode. Okay, so one of these leads to a boss. Okay. I think it's this one. No, it's the one above. And this room makes no sense. There is a single candelabra that had absolutely nothing but a, a single penny in it. That was a waste. Take that, resist fire. I have not been making much use of the resist potions, which, I mean, they can help, but I've never had a cause to use them at any point in any of the playthroughs I've done. All right, so we got a boss fight against a whole bunch of skulls. <gasps> against a big pile of bodies! Legion, which in this game they call Grand Falloon for some reason. All right, so we've got the first section. You want to try to damage as many of these as you can. Before you uh, go to the center, because the uh, little tentacle wiggling around there will actually start firing laser beams. I hit the wrong button. Come on, get up there. Ah, oh, crap, come on, up. I love the little screaming sound whenever the uh, 
ball of humans decides to start firing off uh, a whole bunch of them. Start taking some serious damage. Uh oh. Yep, there it goes. These weird tentacle things. At least they're not doing much damage. Now, the laser beam does. The little, I don't know, legion grunts on the uh, ground don't do much of anything. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that scream is a Wilhelm scream, so they use the stock sound effect there. Owie! Fight's taking so long, the soundtrack had to re, uh, restart. It looped. There we go. Once we break the center, the top one will actually come off. Oh! Well, no, but we did get to the center, which we could start damaging. We don't have to worry as much about the uh, little grunts on the uh, ground attacking. Although, when it does actually get to the point where it's just the center, they'll start spinning around. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that. Get my health up. And our reward for all of our effort. Up. At Mormigil, whatever that is. A black sword, strong versus holy. Now, are there really a ton of enemies in this game that have a holy affinity to them? No, not really. There are some that are literal, like, angel-style type enemies. Uh, it's a very small number. Why are they helping Dracula? I don't know. That almost seems like the absolute worst thing they could possibly do. All right, so we are pretty much done here. There's one more area that I'm missing here. I gotta remember where it is. I consult the map for a second. Ah, that's right. We got to go up the really long shaft at the uh, kind of the center of the map to the right of the center. There was a room that we could not get to before because we didn't have the ability to fly. And even when we had the double jump, we couldn't reach that side room. It's all right. Pretty easy to get to, and it's not a whole lot of additional rooms that we would have to go through. All right. No, not that way. In fact... Um, I think we'll actually be able to get to it faster by just going back to the library. So we'll do that. We'll go ahead and actually let's sort the items real quick. Pick up my library card, wherever it is. There it is. 
back to the library. We're done down here. We don't have to do anything else in that part of the map. And put my more McGill back on. Go in. What can Selling I do gems for you? we picked up. I'm interested in this. Doesn't look like I picked up any. I'm interested in this. Are there any items we could pick up or need to pick up? Buy another library card just to be safe. <laughs> Thank you. And boy, that is a very expensive single-use item. I don't know why they made those so costly. Even at 108 damage for a single weapon, that is ridiculous. Should be able to sell items like that. I don't have enough for Joseph's cloak, which is unfortunate, but that's the only item in the game that you can actually affect the appearance of. And basically what you do is you just uh, you can change the outside and inside of the cloak uh, to whatever color you choose. So you can make them really weird. You can make it like pink on one side and yellow on the other if you wanted. Eh, not yeah, well, that now. I'm not really wearing anything at this point that is so detrimental that I need to replace it. And the benefit of coming to the library is you can actually turn into the wolf and then didn't want to do that. Uh-oh. I'm getting hemmed in my books! Around the end. Got an uncurse for my efforts. Oh, I got a rapier. Okay, we got a swap. That is all the way at the very top. There it is. Not as good as McGill, but I believe it attacks faster, plus it has that special ability, which is, uh... Can you remember it's quarter circle? It is quarter circle. Alright, so we want to go down and left, because we want to get to the... Oh, come on. Down. Whee! Now that's an efficient elevator. I want to get to the long horizontal corridor right here. Which we can now run through. Can't remember what we named the eyeball, but say hi to the eyeball again. And we're gone. <laughs> that, uh, that power of wolf or whatever... Uh, of the ones that we picked up really makes things a lot easier. Jerk. Get out of here. And we want to go up. This guy drops shields, and he usually drops them very frequent. So I'm a little confused about why I never found one from that particular skeleton. At least not one I remember. I believe both of the shield skeletons items are shields. Which makes sense, but I should have found something. Just gonna avoid him. Here's where we couldn't get any further in the past. Now you can turn into a bat, get to the other side. There's a little room right here. Oh, look at that. We got a sword. Which is a two-handed weapon, the claymore. Big wind up too with each swing. So this is a slow attacking weapon. Probably not a great pickup for what we're about to do. Unfortunately. Oh no, no, no. There is a. I was gonna say I don't think there's a save room nearby, but uh, I think it's actually right across from the the boss fight that we're about to get to. Meal ticket card. Meal ticket card. This 
So a meal ticket does, and we'll leave those for now. Go down here, put on Moonstone. It improves your stats after sunset. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to tell what time of day it is based on the uh, time in-game, or at least not in the menu here. That's just your playtime. However, if you go to the clock room, whatever the time is on that clock determines what the time of day is, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so here is the save room. Uh, what I was going to say about the meal ticket is whenever you use the meal ticket, you drop a random food item on the ground that you can pick up and add to your inventory. Again, there is an item in this game called the duplicator. It costs $500,000, a ton of money. And basically it makes it so that whenever you use a consumable item, it's not supposed to be burned when you use it. As long as you have Duplicator equipped, it copies that item and you get to use it again. That includes meal tickets, so you can, in theory, make all the food you need just by putting a Duplicator on and then just popping off a whole bunch of items, including some that you normally would not see in the game unless you used a meal ticket. And they're all randomized, so you have no control over what drops or when. All right. I don't think there's any special... Oh, there was! You do a back-forward attack, he does a uh, lunging move. Now, this is interesting. A save room, but it's a different color. All right, so we've already talked about the uh, pretty awful voice work in the game. This is probably not going to rank near the top of anyone's list of great voice acting. It's maybe one of the better voice actors in the game, but that's not a very high mark to reach. So let's just, uh, I'll shut up and, and let you listen. Mother! That voice! Alucard, it's you! I'm coming, Mother! I'll save you! No, Alucard! Don't come here! But, Mother! It's all right. If my death can save others, I gladly surrender my life. Mother, no! Please, no! Yes, Alucard. Watch me die and remember always my last words to you. Yes, Mother. You must despise humans. They are to be your prey. Sounds good to what? me. Better for them to die than to let them compound their sins. Begin by slaying that one over there. Well do. No, it wasn't like this. What's wrong? Alucard. My mother never said such a thing. What do you mean? Kill them and bring them happiness. No, you're not my mother. What kind of demon are you? <laughs> you broke free of my spell. I like that. Demon, death is too good for you. Come here, little boy, and show me what you've got. Now, the headshots that they have of all of the characters in the game that have speaking parts uh, are, are very small. You see just their head. But they did actually go through and animate or, or draw uh, the full upper torso and, in some cases, the full body of many of the characters, including the succubus. It's probably for the best you only see the head, however, because she's topless. <laughs> and uh, you could probably see from her character model here that she's topless. And uh, yeah, that, that would have been a hard one to get by the ESRB in 97 still. She did. There was a tiny difference in the model there. I smell your blood. You're a vampire. Could it be... Nothing. That strength, that beauty. You're the son of Lord Dracula. I sure am. Death in the dream world will set your soul wandering for eternity, demon. Wait, I beg of you. Ah! Acting, thank you. <laughs> Boy, that is, um, that's some wonderful moaning. <laughs> All 
All right, so the whole reason we came down there was to get the gold ring, which I'm not going to put on right now because it actually doesn't do anything. So it'd be essentially the same as putting on one of the other uh, gems that you pick up. It's supposed to be used in tandem with another item. And you see in the description, it says it has an inscription that says where dot 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 clock dot dot dot. You pick up the other item, it tells you what the other two words are in that message. So we will be headed to the other location for the counterpart ring right now. We do want to get to a teleportation room, which I think we'd be best by doing... Well, I think what we'll do is it looks like the fastest way is going to be to go through the middle of the map. Fortunately, there is not an easy way to do this. It's just going to require a lot of tracking by foot. Gotcha. Ah, come on, get up there. Claymore is big and slow, but if you're doing a jumping attack, usually you can avoid the uh, the delay in the swing. we go. I was wondering when I was going to find a shield. It was a leather shield, which isn't great. We'll go ahead and put back on the Mormagill and replace the shield hand with the leather shield. Not a great shield, but ultimately it is a shield, so we're going to put it on. Uh-oh. No, no, no. The diamond is okay, but it's not a great weapon. It does this. If you're in a closed space with a, a ceiling that will allow it to bounce back and forth, it can do a ton of damage. You're almost never in that situation, though. Ah, oh, crap. Another Takamitsu! It's not up there. It's uh, or down there. It's up here. All right. <laughs> The problem is we're at a spot now where there's not a whole lot of items for me to pick up anymore. We're kind of stuck with this, and we might not get another weapon before the end. We might just end up having to take this into the final fight. It's doing decent enough damage against... Some enemies, I guess. It's not too, too bad. I've never been hit with a piece of bamboo before, so I can't speak to the uh, damage potential of it. Okay, come on. I'm just going to fly through it. Screw it. Get out of there. And do this. There we go. Things a little bit easier on myself. Oh. I think I'm doing this right. Let me double check. Yes, that should get us where we need to go. Not too much time. Unfortunately, because the Takamitsu is not an actual bladed weapon, you don't bleed zombies, so I can't do dark metamorphosis and get anything out of it. Not here. Ah, oh boy. <laughs> We're taking all of the crap. I'm going to go into the final fight and just have garbage on. Basically starter items. Oh, come on. Do the thing. There we go. Oh, come on. Do the move. There we go. That's one of the hardest ones to do in the game, but I nail it. That what you have to do is you have to to in order to do it, you have to hold down the jump button to stop him in place. And then you hold up and rotate uh, like a three quarter of a circle forward. So you're going up, upright. Uh, if you're facing the direction I'm facing up, upright, 
right, down, right, down, down, left, and left. Then let go of the jump button at the same time, and you do that move. A lot of button presses to get it right. It's one of those times where I kind of like the squishy D-pad on the Xbox controllers. It actually makes doing those moves just a little bit easier. Oh, did I go on the wrong one? Oh, crap. I got to go down, not up. And I can do it down. Yes, I can. All right. Oh, that should have killed me. <laughs> I ran into a wall at like 70 miles an hour. Er. Let's stop on a dime move, man. Got it. I ran out of magic before I get to the end. Nope, I didn't. This is what I was trying to do. This is why this little shortcut is a nice benefit here. We're gonna have to walk because I'm out of magic. Allie! Oh, if you could drop your hunting sword, that would be nice. I know you won't, but if you could... Demon help me out here. Ah, screw it. Alright, so this is why we needed Spike Breaker so bad. We can use it here. To break the spikes, and then... You can actually break the spikes as mist as well. Why? I don't know. And that door was put there very specifically so that even if you had the magic and the ability to turn into mist and travel all the way down that hall, the mist can't open the door. So you have to have Spike Breaker to get through there safely. So, did you find Richter? I don't know if he's the one you're looking for, but I found a Belmont. Really? So he is here? But the one I saw was the enemy. He was the lord of this castle. That, that can't be true. You're wrong. I, I, I must go now. You're lying. I, I'm going to leave. I go ahead and sit at the table. She'll be back. I know it. All right, so we got the silver ring. The counterpart to the gold ring. Oh, I hit the wrong one. There we go. Now we need to oh go back to the very center of the the game map, and the reason for that is the description of the two rings says we're in clock tower. So you go back to that center of the map, which is the clock tower. Why is there two clock towers in the game? I don't know. One of them is an actual tower, and this is just a room that has a big clock in it. So that was probably a bad translation, I'm guessing. And the fastest way to do that is just go literally back the path that we came to get to this point. Oh, look at that transition. Oh, that was smooth. Now, oh, I don't want to come up here and save because I think this may be... Oh, no, it's not the only one before we get to the center of the map, but it is uh, something we probably want to do anyway. Just out of good habit. Save and save often. This was at a time when we were playing games on disc and auto saves were not a thing yet. 
So if you didn't save manually on a regular basis and you died, you could lose a ton of progress. This is one of those weird things that was just a, a moment in time and boy are we better for not having to do this anymore. But there was a moment in time when we had to use... Oh, I should just do it in here. Trying to charge through these guys. There was a moment in time when we had to use memory cards to do saving. Which, in retrospect, sounds like a step backwards in technology. Just to, to put put things in their their perspective time and respective time and place. This game, you had to have a memory card in order to save your progress. But the previous Castlevania games in the series did not have a save option. They had a password system, but games that came out on the same system as the previous Castlevania games had a battery backup on the cart. Now, it makes sense in the case of a disc-based video game. You can't save to the CD. That's not how CDs work. Uh, by the way, it is 5 -0, or excuse me, uh, f uh, 4 50, what is that, 6, 57 right now, so I think that's, yeah, that's tied to the game time, so yeah, I'm not sure, it, maybe it is nighttime, I, I don't know, uh, but anyway, uh, you could save games on cart back in the day, and then the PlayStation and disc-based games started coming out, and you had no way to save the game, so they had to make cards that you would pay for to save. Now, Nintendo... For whatever reason, before they made that step to disc-based media, on the N64, decided that they were going to follow suit and make memory cards as well. But the N64 games were on a cartridge that could have a battery backup. Why did they need memory cards? <laughs> it is one of the dumbest decisions of all time. There was never a need to do that. All right, so this is why you needed to wear the rings. The minute and hour hand are going to spin around the clock and then point straight down. In case you didn't count there, that was 13 chimes. Why was it 13? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's considered an unholy or uh, evil number. I, I just I have no basis for that one. Get some health. Some hearts up. Still going into this fight with uh, pretty much one of the worst weapons in the game. I never changed out of the spike breaker. I think I probably should, just to be fair. I did technically pick up, uh, what was it? Was it a cloth tunic? I don't remember what it was. We're going to say it was a cloth tunic, just, just because. Now, I will take off the rings because I wanted to keep a Lapis Lazuli on, and I think Moonstone is what I was using before. I don't know if Moonstone is actually helping me at all. Doesn't matter. We're putting it on. All right, so we have to... Oh, yeah. Did I get... I did not. All right, there's something we get right up here. On a card? That voice. Maria? <gasps> I'm sorry. You were right. I got a he fighter. has joined forces with the enemy. So it was a Belmont after all. 
But someone must be controlling him. Whatever we do, we can't harm Richter. But you he can't. must be stopped. I know. Well, here. Take these with you. What are these? If you wear these, you can see beyond evil illusions. Thank you. Tis best than if you pray for the soul of your friend. No, no, no. We're not done here. <laughs> I'm gonna bite her and make her a vampire. I don't know if that's how it works if you're a, a dampier half vampire. I'm sure someone out there will be able to correct me. All right, so we went down there ostensibly to pick up a pair of glasses. So we have to put those on there, uh, a helmet type item. See beyond magical curses. Now, we need to go... Oh, crap, there's some rooms down there we didn't get. Tiny number of rooms on the left side. Hit those real quick. Seems like a, an incredibly overproduced area of the map. They put a lot of detail into this. Alright, so... All we have left to do, and yes, I know there's two little tiny blocks of area on the map that we've never touched. And frankly, we may just leave them as is because I don't know if it's worth going back just to hit two tiny spots. Uh, but we can certainly hit the ones that were in or ne very near. Which is why I went back for those three down below. Well, we've done everything we can. Now it's a final face down of uh, Richter Belmont, who's lost his damn mind. We have to go set him right. this just to skip through this area there we go I get to the warp room because we're gonna take that all the way to the very tippy top of the castle I think we have to do the full circuit of yeah because it's gonna take you down below twice first one we've already done the second one will take us to the very bottom of the map then we'll go to the right to the library then to the very top So we're at the very bottom. We're by the library. And now we're at the very top of the castle. Now, I, I think if you're having trouble keeping track of where you are, the head at the very top of the uh, passageway there changes depending on what part of the castle you're in. Is that enough of a, a clue to tell you what part you're in? I don't think so, because I don't memorize those. But I suppose there's some people out there who could probably be able to safely tell you where you are. All right, we're going to get to the top here. We're going to save. And we're ready to take on the final boss. It's one of those timing-based things. It's hard to get it perfect, but when you do, it's very satisfying. Sliding up to the very top. All right, here we go. It's our fight with Richter. I've been waiting for you. Answer me. Why is a Belmont planning the resurrection of Count Dracula? Count Dracula rises but once every century, and my role is over. If I can resurrect him, then the battle will last for eternity. If those are your true feelings, then so be it. All right, let's take him on. Uh oh, 
But hey, the heck is that thing at the top of the screen? This thing. That's not Richter. It's a little orb. I'm pinned. I can't move. Hey, devil, you want to help me out here? Ow. Uh-oh. Oh, boy, I got to heal. Get some potion in me. Yeah, we should be all right now. Go ahead and put my crappy weapon back on. Takemitsu. The biggest what the f moment of the entire game. I've done it. I've saved the world. Hey, wait a minute. What's that up in the sky? Lightning. Another castle. Mother. No. What have I done? Thank you, Alucard, for saving Richter. Alucard? The same Alucard who fought alongside my ancestor, Trevor Belmont? That was over 300 years ago. Yep. No time for small talk. Is the person who controlled you in that castle over there? Yes, I think so. Maria, take Richter and leave here. I'll finish this. All right. Good luck. And this is where things get ridiculous. So we're in the castle. Sort of. Except it's upside down. So we're only halfway through the game, ladies and gentlemen. We have to go through the entire castle again, but upside down. <laughs> the first time I played this game and I got to this point, I was like, what? I had no idea that uh, they had an entire other half of the game to play. I thought at that point I had played through an interesting game that seemed to take away the fun of Castlevania, which is always trying to get to and defeat Dracula. And it turns out, no, you still get to fight Dracula, but you don't realize that until you actually beat what you thought was going to be the final boss. Oh, put it on that slot. Oh, they sorted things. And where was it? Uh, bastard sword. There we go. And the shield was a leather shield. Yeah, that was uh, a, a really fun switcheroo that they pulled on people as part of the game here. Now, unfortunately, you have to jump through quite a few hoops to get to that point. If you don't wear the holy glasses in that fight, you don't see the little orb following Richter around. If you just fight him and defeat him, the game ends and you have uh, a meeting with Maria where you say there was nothing else that could be done, but it's weird. You think something was missing and then the game just kind of ends with an unsatisfactory finish where they're kind of telling you, hey, something more was going on. You need to go back and try to figure out what you missed. And I think there's even a different ending if you have the glasses but choose not to wear them or you wear them but you fight and kill Richter instead of the uh, the orb following him around 
So there's a couple different ways that the game can just sort of end there instead of giving you an entire secondary castle to go through. All right, so what we're going to do here is... We're going to go all the way up here. We're going to come in this room over here where we'll save, and we're going to call it an episode. All right, so we made it all the way through the regular castle. We found a pair of glasses that Maria gave us that will help see evil illusions, and we found out that uh, Richter Belmont was under the control of Shaft. Now, if you've never played Rondo of Blood or Dracula Chronicle X or whatever the full name was, uh, you had no idea that uh, Shaft was the main bad guy that resurrected Dracula in that game. So he is tied to the characters in this game, primarily Richter, Belmont, and Maria. Uh, his tie to Alucard doesn't exist because Alucard wasn't awake during the events of that game. He was still sleeping in his coffin somewhere. In any case, he's the reason why all this is happening. He kind of uh, enchanted Richter, made him come to the castle and claim his uh, lordship over Castlevania. And then uh, it turns out as part of his uh, enchantment, they were going to use him to help bring Dracula back much earlier than he's supposed to, because he's supposed to come back every hundred years. But uh, through whatever magic they're working, uh, they're going to be able to bring Dracula back after only seven or eight. So anyway, I just picked up a bunch of items after saving and seeing I was wrapping up. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we've uh, made it through the castle. We exposed the illusion, made Shaft reveal himself, and he escaped to the inverted castle, which is literally the entire castle map upside down. And we have to go through all of that to pick up specific parts of Dracula in order to put him back together, fight him one more time, and save the day, which we will do in probably, eh, say, two or three more episodes before we get to the end. That's going to do it for episode six of my Castlevania Symphony of the Night playthrough. As always, I do appreciate each of you watching, and I will see you next time.